Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Now we're starting from the bottom of the garden this week because we're going to take the tops off the potatoes, the main crop, and then we're going to leave them a couple of weeks to let the skins harden a little bit and then we'll lift them and put them in the shed. Now to do it, I'm using the hand shears and I'm leaving a little stump so we can see where they are. Now when you do this you'll find that the stumps that you leave will bleed a little bit but that's fine. Okay, here's the shears, good pair of sharp shears, makes the life a lot easier. And the best way to do is to throw the horns away from you and then cut. Then we put the horns on the garden to let them dry and then I burn them. It's just a case of chopping them off. It's not to do this one. I find it easy if you push the horns away from you and then cut. And it's just beginning to rain. So we'll finish one or two and then we'll go up the shed, I think. We'll do this one here, look. You see where it's all over the place? If you move them away, and then you can see to cut, okay? Just leave a stump so you can see where they are. There you go. And you can see how many weeds that have got between the nettles I'll try and pull out as I go. Right, a lot of people take their homes to the skip sites etc to get rid of I burn them but whatever you do try not to put them on your compost heaps with any disease it will come straight back at you it's been a good year this year for our potatoes with no blight but I think the the drought has taken its toll on them but at least we've got some potatoes I'll do this one for you and then we'll call it the day then. Right, so you can see how it's done. So I'll finish this row and then I'll come back to you, okay? Now, that's all the tops taken off the main crop potatoes. We just had a little shower of rain Temperature's only 15 today, but it's it's a pleasant day and I loved that bit of rain because re we really need some rain here. I'll show you later on on the, on the beds up there how dry it is. That's the main crop topped off now. We'll leave them a couple of weeks just to harden the skins and then we'll get the bed prepared for this will be the pumpkin and squash bed for next year. I am going to alter it a little, but we'll talk about that later. So let's move to the next job. We're up on plot C now. This was this year's brassica bed, as you can see. Now I've taken these covers off now. I've taken, first of all, I had to take the cover off the brussels, because the brussels were beginning to push up the mesh a little bit and they had white fly in there. Once you've got white fly inside the mesh, it's best to remove the mesh. And then I sprayed it with some horticultural soap and it seems to have knocked them down. We might need to spray every week now. We've got quite a few in there, but when we shake the plants, they're not too bad at the moment. Now this is what's left here. There's They've actually got 10 of these summer cabbages still to go. Purple sprouting has actually blown the cover off now. And I'm sure I bought dwarf plants, but I don't think the dwarf ones arrived. But they'll be fine. They're in the, they'll sit there all winter and then they'll put the, the sprouting flowers on in the spring. That'll be fine. 
I've left this cover on for a little while. I see there is a little bit of white fly in there, but it's not too bad. Calabrese is coming up now, so I'll probably leave the cover on to keep those clean. The back of the Calabrese, there's about 10 autumn cauliflowers, which are doing very well. well I, they haven't started hearting up or anything yet, but they won't be long. The leaves are beginning to twist in the centre and that's a good sign that the hearts are forming. I'm not going to rip it apart because I might damage the leaves. That's a good sign when they start twisting, you know that there's heart in there. Now I'll just show you the celery, how that's doing in celeriac and the where the onions are and I've put some more onion seed in and I'll show you what I'm going to have to do with that because the birds are playing up with it. This is the celery and the celeriac bed. It's celeriac at this end. It's just beginning to heart up nicely now. These will be there for most of the winter. What we'll do is we'll put some straw in but you will need to take these bottom leaves off so it's nice and clean around the bottom and then it helps the the stem at the bottom swell up for you. Now these are the onions, the red and the white, and the birds keep pulling them out. So I've brought a cover down for the next batch that's going in. They're a bit of a nuisance to keep ragging them out and they're not really being able to get the roots down properly. Now the late tomatoes, this was a do or don't uh, tomato bed. But they seem, at the moment, they're just beginning to colour. Now, if the weather turns a little bit and they're not going to be ripening, what I should do is take the tomatoes off on the vine and hang them in the greenhouse and let them ripen on the vine. But at the moment, they're fine. A few more outdoor peppers there. They're doing, they're doing very well. They're colouring up and they're doing very well outside. I put some more lettuce there. I have got a mould problem in here. We'll have to put some jelly babies in, see if we can get rid of them. The leeks are doing fine, keeping their eye out for the rust on them and the mildew. But they're okay. The butternut squash frame. I have taken a lot of leaves off them to let the light through. And I've put little hammocks under them just in case they drop and they'll damage as they drop because they're very heavy now. The supports on just to hold them because if they fall off early they won't ripen off the vine. The carrots are doing very well. They might want thinning a little bit but I, I don't like thinning them too much. I'd sooner take them and use them when they're a little bit bigger and thin them that way. This is the pumpkins and squashes for this season. I have taken quite a few leaves off as you can see we were getting a bit of mildew with the weather turning now so i thought it's best to take the leaves off rather than let them spread through but it also lets the light and the sunshine when it does sunshine ripen these fruits the other thing is next year this will be the plot a which will be for onions and the beans and the peas. I've started bringing the manure in ready. There's quite a lot of manure to come so I wanted to get the bags emptied so we can transport some more here so I will be tipping quite a bit there. Now I'm just going to pop into the fruit cage and thin some of the gooseberries down to let the air through so they don't get too much mildew in this damp heavy weather. And we're just going to look at the gooseberries and if there's anything congested and tight, we're just going to take one or two of the branches off just to let the air through. It is time that you will get, especially the American mildew on them, you'll have a terrible job to get rid of it. So the more air we can get through them, the better. We'll also keep an eye out for any broken branches that have been broken during harvest, etc. Okay. Then we'll do the main pruning when they're dormant, but Remember we're reorganising in here so when we come to move them I will be pruning quite hard but I'll show you first how we prune them and then I'll prune them hard to move. Now it's a case of looking round the bush 
and just taking one or two hopefully the older branches and to keep the center open so this is in the way so we'll take that out just above another bud there that's going in so we'll go to this one that's coming out right you will need gloves on for doing this just go in and take these out you see very prickly but really do go in there and open the centers we're not really too concerned about the main pruning just as long as there's air to get through This is going in the middle of nowhere there, look, so we'll take that off anyway. But that's not too bad at that. Where this uh, current's grown into the gooseberry, I'm just going to take the current off so the air can get in and around them. See, it's only that little bit, and so we'll take that off. Just to give it a bit of... There you go. We'll take that one as well, shall we? And then we'll take this branch while we're here. You leave those alone, they're prickly. And I think I'm going to take this one as well, because it's an old branch and it's crisscrossing all over the place. That will do. I've just opened the centre up so the air can get in and circulate around the bush. I should just quickly go around them all at that, that would do fine. On this small one, it's only a year old, but there's a broken branch here. And you see this one that's dragging on the floor. I'll just take this off first then and show you that. I'll take it back to a bud, look. You can see it was broken, so it's weakened it. This is a good example here. We've got all the new growth there. And then this is the old wood there. So you could really take it off there. Very prickly. I'll just put that away. I don't want the chicken to take it. Take all these off here. Use the secateurs or a very sharp knife. But these secateurs are still sharp. So that's it. Look. And then... If you go opposite that bud there and just score it, then pop that in the soil and over winter and next spring that'll root down nicely. So the end of next summer you've got yourself a new goose plant. Now alternatively you can take a scrape out, I'll do it not you. And then if you pop that into the scrape and get a pin, galvanised pin, and just pin that down. And then cover the centre up firmly, leave that end out. That will root in no time at all and then you'll have another plant there as well. Very easily propagated gooseberries. So here that was all. Nicely bold last time, last autumn actually, when we pruned it. But there's one or two a little bit congested in the centre, so I'll quickly take those out and show you the finish. Try and go for the older, the older branches if you can. Anything, keep an eye out for damage as well, because that could go rotten. And, I'll just thin this bit and then I'll show you. There you are, look. That's a nice open open centre now for the air to get through and all the outsides are nice, so that's good. That's all the pruning we really need to do on the gooseberries at this time of year. Just open them up, let the air in. And then when they're dormant, we'll give them a good prune. Now we've been asked about pruning the blueberries. Now we don't prune the blueberries until the dormant. But I'll just show you what we will be taking off when we do prune them so you'll know. These green shoots are the nice new growth that we want. To prune it so we get more of these. What we do, can you see this 
really old branch here that's peeling now. All right, it's got a bit of new growth on it, but the old growth, I'll take that off right at the bottom and then that'll encourage more of these new shoots that come off. This, this one was last year's and it's just started fruiting this year, but next year that will carry a massive crop on that. Now we'll take the old one off, one, two, three, and that'll be it this year. Give it a good mulch of pine needles if you can, rotten pine needles, they absolutely love them. Now the other tip with blueberries is to always plant more than one. If you have a solitary blueberry, it never seems to do well, but if it's got a partner where they can cross pollinate a little bit, they always do better. The little bit of rain we just had is down past over and the sun's coming out so we're going in the shed. <laughs> okay, we'll have a look at how this light's getting on. Now uh, we're in the shed now and we'll just show you the progress of the cuttings and the seeds that are underneath the grow light. I'm standing back because it makes me a funny colour when I stand too close. Now as you can see the cuttings are doing very nicely now. I think I've lost one there but you will lose an odd one anyway that's a fuchsia. So what I might do is just pop another one in there they won't take long to grow. The seed as you can see they're nice and straight and short very pleased with that. That's a weed look we'll take that out. That was corn from the chickens. Now as you can see they're all doing very well, very pleased with it. I have put the light on the timer now to say to keep walking up and down all the time. So it's on for about 18 hours a day. It is a LED so it's hardly using any electricity. I'm very pleased with it. It's doing a good job. But time will tell and we'll see next week how it's getting on, okay? Now, one of our subscribers has bought a maxi tapner or taping machine, whatever you want to call them and they've read the instructions and they say they're not very clear about how to load the tapes and the staple. I'll show you how to do the staples. <laughs> Now you shouldn't have a lot of problem loading these because it's all, as you can see, it's all in Chinese writing. <laughs> now, there's my taping machine, very old, very dirty, wants a good clean but we'll do that at the end of the season. Now what I'm going to do is strip it and then reload it. Okay, so first thing we do is take staples out. Give them a bang, there's the staples we were using. Take the cover off, there and there if I can, hang on, it's quite stiff this one because it's old, there you go. So there you are, take the tape out and we'll put new tape in, okay. Don't worry about that one, I will use it. Now these will have a little sticky bit which always, if you leave that sticky bit on it always jams in there when you're beginning to use it so it's best to take that sticky thing right through okay and when you're loading it looks like one of the chickens wants to give me a hand when you're loading your tape it seems logic to put it that way into the machine the best don't do that put it so the roll is that way, you see, and then that goes round, if we can get it round, there you are, and then that way. You see how it goes round it, don't do it this way because when you use it you'll find it unrolls itself in the, in the spool. Once you've got that to there, that just goes inside that cover and on the outside of that little spring there. If the spring's not working, just pull it out a little bit like that. Then clip that, clip that, make sure they click. If you don't click them, you'll find when you're using it, your spool will fall out. 
and pull your tape through past that sticky bit there's the sticky bit look always have trouble with that and then the best thing to do is to feed it into those jaws there look you see like that and then that so it's free and that that that'll move nicely through there to cut it off if you put it down and give them a good that's chopped it off now it's sticking to me now so if it's going up this channel and it sticks to the plastic it's quite difficult for it to come out there so it tends to jam the main problem with these machines I find if that little tag there gets too short then that won't pick them up to bring them across because that jam that pinches the tape and pulls it open with it then you put your plant in and then it staples from there now to get the staples in your staples come in a clip that big now you won't get on this particular machine you won't get a whole whole piece into there so what I tend to do I break them in half put that back in the box I'll put that one back in as well then if you turn your machine up these go in the bottom channel facing upwards into there like that can you see yeah, I can't see from this angle hmm. there you are there is a little slider there for you to put it in look see and then that goes in then this that's your spring that pushes your staples forward keep that well lubricated with some three-in-one oil or something spray oil is as good as anything on there then that follows it down this clip here clips under there what I find is sometimes with you doing it a lot that tends to hold down a bit so just give it a little pull up and then it clips better when you push it in you see clips and won't won't release then it's just a case make sure all your clips are in tight make sure all your covers are on then like that test it and that's done if it doesn't put a staple in if you just twig it a few times you can feel the resistance there then you should be able to pick the tape up you see that's picked the staple up as well unfortunately the staples are not stainless steel or anything so they usually last about one season maybe one and a half and that's your taping machine it wants a good clean keep them well oiled they're a good machine this one is actually that old that one of the rivets has fallen out so I've actually put a piece of wire in just hold it together on that rivet good machine does a lot of work around the garden try not to when you open these try not to move them back too much because it's only a plastic hinge and they will snap off eventually that's where they usually go there then these hinges break off and you have to put a bit of tape around it and hold it but that's your maxi tapner or your taping machine and usually not a lot of problem you might have a little bit of problem I find is in there I don't know if you can see it in there there is a blade that actually cuts the tape now it's just when you renew them you just push them in but there's sometimes that with continuous use the blade moves too far back so I use a little tiny screwdriver and push it in there and just twig it forward a bit and then it's back into use last Saturday we went to the local show in the next village and was having a walk around and we went into the craft tent and there was a gentleman there and a nice lady who actually make leather goods and on his on his table was this pouch and I said that's just what I want so Diane bought me one 
It's very good. It's actually made out of horse hide and it will mature and colour up nicely but I love the little pattern on it. We bought this for the secateur. These are the secateurs we had on trial by the way in the Sensi one. Still going strong, a little bit dirty but that's because they've been working. I will clean them up, get some wire wool on this and clean it up. They fit nicely in there and it's got that nice broad strap to hold on to my bow. I like that. It's comfortable as well because it's soft. Because I thought it was a, a nice, nice looking pouch for the secateurs. We got his card and Diane will put it on the drop down box for you. Now we're just going up to top up those potatoes that we put in for Christmas. We're up at the greenhouse now, we just need to top these potatoes up. There's a big black cloud coming above us, so hopefully we're going to get some rain to soften that land. I'd be so pleased if it does. I've done two, it's the same compost, and that's as far as I'm going to take them. So what I'll do is I'll take a handful, just hold them to one side and fill them up. Okay. I do water them about every other day but not a lot of water. I don't want them too wet because that will make the atmosphere around here too damp and you know what the damp atmosphere does when it's warm. There we are. I should just continue with that all the way around the mall. Right, that's the boxes topped up. That's all I will be putting in. We'll let them finish at that. And if it gets too cold, then I just pop them in the greenhouse. But I don't want to pop them in the greenhouse until it's absolutely necessary, else obviously they'll stretch a little then. Now, I do believe it's beginning to rain. So that'll be about it for this week. We've got a few jobs done. And, but I'm so pleased it's going to rain. We desperately need to rain. So thank you for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And many, many thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.